Hi everybody, in this video I'm going to cover everything you need to know about stored procedures in SQL. In essence, what stored procedures allow us to do is to quite simply create an SQL query which we can reuse over and over again whenever we need to without having to write out the actual query. So let's have a look at an easy example. Over here I've created the table members and this table has five entries. It has an ID, a first name, a last name, an age, an income, and a job. So how about we create a stored procedure that gives us the first name of all the individuals within the members table. If we were to do this with a simple query, we could simply write select first name from the members table and you would see that we get all the first names from the members table. But how would we do this if we would want to store this as a procedure? We could simply click on the stored procedures icon over here, right click, create stored procedure, and then take the query that we just wrote and pass it in between these two keywords, begin and end. Now we wanna make sure that we end this query with a semicolon. Then we need to add a name for our procedure and it's simply gonna be called get underscore names. Then you'll see that there is a pair of parentheses here. We don't need them at the moment because we're not gonna do anything concerning parameters. We're gonna to get to that later. And we can then proceed to click apply in the bottom right hand corner. Then we're gonna get a first small screen where we click apply and then we're gonna click finish. Now what you'll see is that under the stored procedures icon over here, we get our first stored procedure, get names, which is the one we created a moment ago. So then over here in our SQL editor, we can simply go ahead and write get underscore or call get underscore names and then empty parentheses. And when we go ahead and execute this, you'll see that the output is exactly the same as the output that I get when I, when I go ahead and run the query, which has been saved within this procedure, which is this one over here. So you can see the results are the same. So remember the original table that we had is this. We have this first name column. So when we go ahead and call this procedure again, we only get the first names. The next thing that I want to show you is that we can also add parameters to our stored procedures. So how about we create a procedure which returns all the records that have a certain age? In order to do that, we can start off by creating a query. If we were to, for example, check for all the records who have the age 25, we can simply go and select all from the um, members table where the age is equal to 25. Now let's make sure to add quotes around that. And when we execute this, you see we get only the first record because this is the one where the age is 25. So let's go ahead and copy this and put it into a procedure. So we're gonna create a new stored procedure and we're going to call it members underscore by age because we're gonna be retrieving entries depending on the age. Then as a parameter, we're simply going to add an input parameter. So we're gonna write in, then age, because that's the input parameter which we're taking in. Then we also need to specify the data type. And in this case, the age is simply an integer. Then within the begin and end keywords, we're gonna paste what I just wrote as a query, but we need to make some small adjustments to this because we need to make sure that we add the members age so we need to specify where this age is coming from and it's coming from the members table and in addition to that we want to replace the 25 over here because we want to have that variable where we can decide whatever we input as our age so we're going to write age over here as our input parameter then we're going to make sure to save this by applying and then we have the next stored procedure uh, pop up under our ribbon over here, which is members by age. So let's go back to our SQL file and let's get rid of what we have at the moment. 
And we're going to write a call statement to the members underscore by underscore age. And then within parentheses, we are going to write the age. So let's say, let's go back to the members table and let's check, for example, what ages we have over here. You can see that we have one entry with an age of 40. So we're going to create a call statement. And what we're going to expect if we add 40 over here is that this entry is going to be returned. So let's go ahead and call it up. And that is exactly what happens. So what we've done over here is we've managed to add a parameter that allows us to access individual records depending on the age. So let's try that again when we go back to the members table and we take, for example, the age 35, then we expect to find Alf Loft. So let's change this to 35 and call it up. And you can see that is exactly what happens once again. So you can see that it's pretty easy to create a stored procedure that takes an input value. How about we try and create a stored procedure which saves the output to a specific variable? So let's go ahead and, for example, create a stored procedure which gives us the count of the number of lawyers that we have in our members table. So over here we have two and stores this value within a variable. So how about we first start off by creating a query which would do this for us. So if we were to determine the number of lawyers, we could simply select a count star of the number of lawyers from the members table. And then we would have to specify at the end what job we're looking for. So where the job is equal to lawyer. And as you would expect, you see the value of two pop up at the bottom. So we're going to copy this query. We're going to go to stored procedures, create a stored procedure and paste this in here. So we already have something to work with. So when we create a procedure that stores something to an output variable, we need to add the keyword out. And in addition to that, we also need to make sure that we add the name of the output variable, which is in this case simply going to be the entries. And we then need to specify the data type. And since we're returning a number value, we're simply going to return an integer and specify that in this output um, field over here. All right, then we're simply going to give this a new name. So we're simply going to call it lawyer underscore count because it's a count of the number of lawyers. And then we need to make sure that we save the number of lawyers within the entries variable. So what we're going to do here is we're simply going to write that um, we're writing the count into the entries variable and we want to make sure that we're taking the job from the members table so members dot job is equal to lawyer let's go ahead and apply and save this and go back to our initial sql file now what we can do is we can simply generate a call to the lawyer underscore count and then we're going to pass in the output variable, which we're simply going to um, define as records. So make sure to always add this at sign before. And now when we create this call statement, you'll see nothing happen at first. But then when we select at records, you'll see that we will get the count of the number of lawyers, which is two. So that is exactly the same thing that we had earlier when we simply created this um, select query and counted the number of lawyers. But now you have the same result, but just as a stored procedure. Now, one thing I do want to show you is that when you try and add a new record into the table, so let me just paste these two lines of code over here. I'm inserting into the members table a couple of new values, specifically one new record um, of Peter whatever, and his age is 19, he earns 40,000 and is a lawyer. 
So let me go ahead and add him into the table. You will now see that we have not two lawyers, but three, which is the one that we added just a moment ago. Now, if I go ahead and um, select the value of that's stored within the at records um, variable over here, you will see that there's still only two. So make sure to always call the stored procedure again if you want your values to be updated. So let's go ahead and call it. And then if I go ahead and select what's in the at records variable, you'll see that now it's three, quite simply because we have recalled this uh, stored procedure after we've added this new entry. The last thing that I want to show you is a stored procedure which combines an input and an output. How about we have a stored procedure which takes as an input the job and returns as an output in a variable the number of people who have the specific job. So let's go ahead and clear all of this out. And we're going to go straight to the stored procedures and create a stored procedure. And then within the keywords begin and end, we're going to write the following. We're going to write down select count and we're going to count and we're going to put this into a variable called records. And then we're going to take these records from the members table. And of course, we want to specify the members that we take because we only want the members who have a specific job, which we pass in as an argument. So we're going to write where members dot job is equal to job. And we end with a semicolon. Now we want to make sure that the field over here within the parentheses is correctly filled. So we're going to write in out as a keyword uh, that we need to use whenever we use inputs and outputs. And then we are going to write records as the variable within which we store the number of people who have a specific job. And it is going to be an integer. Subsequently, we need to add the input. And that was the job. And this is a variable character. And it has a length of 255. So now we've Finally, need to finish this off by adding a name over here, and we're going to call it entries underscore by job. And once we then apply this and have this stored procedure appear in our ribbon over here, you can see entries by job, it's appeared down here. We can go back to our SQL file and we are going to call this stored procedure. So, how would we go about doing that? We can simply write call. Then we're going to write the name of the stored procedure, which is entries underscore by underscore job. And then we need to pass in the arguments. First one is the um, parameter where we're going to store the output, which is going to be at, let's say, entries. It doesn't really matter what we call this. And then we are going to take uh, the input parameter and let's start off with lawyers again. Now we are going to proceed by then selecting the at entries. So let's go ahead and see what happens. We're going to call it and then select the entries. And you can see that we have zero lawyers. And that's quite simply because I misspelled uh, what I was going to write as an input. You can see we don't have any lawyers but we only have lawyer as a job. So let's recall this and then let's reselect it. And you can see we have three. And that is in fact true because in our table, you can see we have one, two, and three lawyers. We can do that with any other job. So let's take the doctors, for example, and then we do the call statement again. And you'll see that now, the select of the entries will return two because we only have two doctors. So the uh, number of lawyers has been overwritten by the number of doctors because we recalled the call statement. All right, so that's going to be it for this tutorial on stored procedures. If it helped you out, then make sure to leave this video a like 
and um, subscribe to this channel if you are new. And as always, we'll see each other in the next video.